Welcome back to the first UTG update of the year. BTC, F, what the hell are they doing? Luna, AVAX, and we'll also look at the market cap as it stands at the moment and what we need to see to really push BTC back up into the 40 and 50Ks and above. Stick around. We are back, baby. <laughs> 2022. Let's go. Texan Ads back here. The dynamic duo back once again. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Texan Ads here from unitytradinggroup.com. Man, I'm excited to get back yeah. into this year. I'm yeah. uh, I'm gagging to get back into it. We've got loads of fresh content that's been dropping on the YouTube uh, over the last few days and will continue to drop over the next few months as well. Mm. We put a, a call out inside the Discord to ask the guys what they wanted to see more of in 2022. Trading strategies, back testing, NFT, metaverse, more market uh, market trading tips and uh, and tips that we give away uh, pretty much every day inside the Discord. So thank you so much for stopping by, uh, stopping by. As I said, Bitcoin, F, Sol, AVAX. We might look at Luna and the total market cap as it stands at the moment. Obviously, really important for where we stand at this pretty critical point for BTC between the 40s and the 30s that we've been looking at. So there's a couple of things that we really need to see to get this market back up and running ads. BTC, as we said, pretty important point for, for Bitcoin at the moment. Absolutely, it is. And um, <clears throat> I've been really discussing this uh not at length but but pretty regularly in the discord in the sense which well in the sense of that i'm looking towards this level of demand on the daily time frame we have tested it not once but twice and i wasn't looking at the one just here because uh, that was on the four hour but i was looking at the one on the daily time frame <clears throat> excuse me and uh 40k is where that resides for 40.5 really in the terms of BTC and seemingly on the daily time frame, there is room for us to retest that zone again. Uh, it does look like on this daily candle, you know, we are pushing towards it. It's, it's not very substantial. There is barely any volume over the past little bit. Uh, and I'm on a three day, that's why. There we go, a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> but we are sitting under the 41 uh, K mark or sort of 42 K mark uh, around that double zero fibs uh, where we did retest the left hand side and uh, and you know test that liquidity that we are seeing uh, just here where we did uh, you know reside around the 13th of October and beyond or oh, in October September there we are on the left hand side but in any case looking at these levels of demand uh, it's pretty straightforward that you know, what we did or what I did say in the Discord in which I said that we might not see, you know, 35, 31, 30K, uh, you know, in the immediate term, we more than likely will have an upward swing uh, from this level because we are quite oversold in this instance when we look at the steamroller indicator and as well as our RSI in which we are testing around that 30 level uh, where we saw or we have seen it bottom out in the past and you can see the left hand side that val validity of that 30 uh, RSI level so all in all on the daily time frame the, the macro scale of things it's looking okay for a movement to the upside where that movement to the upside will go is going to be another uh, another thing to discuss we've got a fair amount of liquidity of liquidity at 45 in which I think that was discussed on the, in the uh, in the discord if you're not part of that you can find that at uh, unitytradinggroup.com but I'd like to hear what you have to say about this tie because all in all, it's looking like we're pretty exhausted. The volume's pretty low, and uh, we are quite oversold. Yeah, the volume, uh, the selling volume or the selling pressure definitely seems to be slowing. I think that, yeah, the relevance of the RSI shouldn't be understated because really the only time where we've gone above and in our RSI video that we posted on YouTube, um, we talk about a couple of different trading strategies, but also how once we do start getting towards the lower bands, we've got 30 and 70 as our parallel channels, but oftentimes we can see the RSI go to, RSI go to, to 20 or 80, depending on whether we're overbought or oversold. Yeah. However, looking back at times past where you can see on the chart really the only time in recent memory where we have gone past that 30 R, uh, that uh, 30 rsi was back on that pretty se uh, severe dip in may and i'm just going to share with you ads uh very quickly just inside the chat this is something that i'm conscious of when it comes to btc as it stands at the moment just in the uh the the chat 
there. Uh, it's give me one sec, sorry. Yeah, Where we stand right now from a, 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 I guess, a structural standpoint, in my opinion, is similar to where we were in um, in May, because I'll just share this if this chart uh, wants to paste. There we go, ads, yep. just inside uh, in the, the Zoom chat. Yep. That's a, like a, a, a similar style fractal that I'm looking at for BTC. So where it stands right now, this is a pretty important part because we can see um, the relevance of this zone and this area where we accumulated beforehand, that was the top of the range before we sort of had our mark up towards this distribution zone. So there's no denying that this is a pretty relevant point. I think we've got a lot of buy stacked in this area. It was a really important psychological area, that 40K zone. Um, I, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I do still feel like there could be some some uh, potential moves to the downside, you know, back towards that 38. There might be another shakeout there where this is a bit of an accumulation zone and we see a quick little spring and a, a last little bit of capitulation before people start selling into the whales buys, just that little bit lower down. But if we can't hold 38, then I think I'd be a little bit more concerned about seeing the, the lower 30s at yeah. this point. Ad. So that's pretty much a long-winded explanation of just saying, I'm not too sure right now. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't think BTC is, is done just yet. I think we're still definitely accumulating the, the run back up towards that top of the range in 68. It is not going to happen just yet. When, oh, hang on. when I, you know, refer to, you know, I don't think it's going to head back down to 30. It's, it's really, really open for discussion uh, in the sense where, you know, we can only read uh, so much into what indicators or what, you know, moving well, oscillators, what levels of demand and supply that we have on the chart. You're speculating, you know, you're speculating, aren't Absolutely. we? You know, but you need to, you need to have the mindset on, on either of side of the trade, you know? So what Adam is saying is, is totally relevant right now. It's, um, it's more so you should take that, uh, that sort of information and, and say, okay, well, what am I going to do personally if we do, you know, reach those lower extremities of the market? Am I prepared for something like that to occur? And on the flip side, am I prepared to, you know, am I prepared to average out? Or am I prepared to, to DCA sell or, or uh, anything like that uh, if we do head back to the upside? So there is, uh, there is a uncertainty about the market at the moment. More so, and I think this is probably going to be uh, in agreement with ties because of the volume has been so dismal and, yeah. and the liquidity uh, of the market currently. Uh, yeah, as, that could as I be, discussed with JB, shout out to you. That could be a good segue <clears throat> to total market cap. And so. as Ads said, uh, volume is everything in, in this market. There needs to be, you know, supply and demand is, is what drives this market. There needs to be plenty of demand at a particular level, lots of liquidity stacked, buys stacked, interest. I think at this point, as we stand right now, it's probably scared a lot of people away and out of this market. Mm -hmm. We're still seeing, we, we have seen active open or active newly open wallet addresses slow down quite a bit. So retail interest is, is lagging a little bit at this current point. However, you look at the explosion of NFTs at the moment, um, which run on the, you know, which run on Ethereum, the majority of them, you've yeah. got Polkadot, Treasure, Sol as well. Uh, but the majority on Ethereum through open seas at the moment, there's going to undoubtedly be a lot of interest in that. Um, but the trading element so far, I, I don't think it's uh, it's it's strong at the moment. But what we really need to see in this market to push it higher is is uh, is liquidity, is volume, is money. Yeah, and absolutely agree. And in the sense of the market cap in general, it's you know taking the same trajectory as BTC has. Um, you know, this is obviously taking into account the entire crypto market cap. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and in which I can highlight the exact same sort of formation that we're seeing with BTC. Uh, you know, very similarly, where we do have a major level uh, in, re in relation to a pivot uh, that has formed the zone at, you know, 1.9 trillion, 1.95 ish uh, trillion dollars there. And uh, we have been respected so far in which the oscillators are being respected at those you know concurrent levels of oversold and 30 for the rsi if we do head to the downside there is a very or well, there is a notable level at around 1.65 uh, trillion dollars in which uh, we could head down to and of course that could be the catalyst for btc to move to you know test that mid 30 area that we were discussing just prior to this so it, it's, it's going to be anyone's game. Uh, what I do recommend is draw in your levels, draw in your TA, 
and uh, you know, post it in the Discord and uh, let us have a look. Let, let's have a discussion about it. A hundred percent. And just got to remember, I'm mindful of conclusions, <laughs> really open to suggestions. So yeah. you really need to, to look at the market from all aspects. You know, what would be the ideal scenario to bomb to 30K to accumulate cheaper BTC and then drive things up quite quickly, pull the retail interest back in. And then you could obviously sell into those late buyers as, as BTC starts to uh, starts to increase in uh, in price. But on Wednesday, we've got a new video coming out. Arthur Hayes, who's the big, the founder of BitMEX, has, uh, has all but said that he expects a lot of volatility in 2022 for BTC or for crypto yeah. as a whole. A lot of May style capitulation events where we saw BTC fall 54% in a number of days. Uh, we've got feds looking at likely increasing rates in the states as well. We've got an election year. So there's a lot of fundamental variables that could influence cryptocurrency and, and cause some what they call like a category one event, or I think I believe it's called a category one event, where in May like that, where all markets fell very quickly. So it's um, um, it's a really interesting article we've got coming out on Wednesday, so stick around for that. But it outlines what Arthur is doing, how he's playing the market, how he's positioning himself to limit downside risk, increase upside reward. A very, very interesting take. But um, yeah, you, you've got to be very mindful at this at this point of where BTC is, that it could go either way quickly. And um, or, before we go on, yeah, I just want to just want to give a shout out to uh, Steamroller, and uh, you know, if you, we look back in time. Yes. And, uh, and take a look at what we have oh, you know, observed, thing? I guess. Uh, this looks very similar to the previous one that we are looking at in, in sense or in, in relation to the market cap because we had a first bottom here and then a secondary one uh, prior yep. to that in which mm -hmm. we saw this to the left-hand side. And again, we are observing the same thing uh, on this chart. So it could be a catalyst for you know, more bullish sentiment, I guess, if we are to take this, uh, you know, as gospel, but I, I suggest we don't, but that's something to put on your radar too. Totally. All right, let's dive over to uh, Ethereum at the moment. A pretty big yeah. fall from its all-time high of almost 5K for Ethereum. Um, not looking great. I think that that 3K area, or so excuse me, that 28K area, is uh, potentially looking very likely. Of course, when it comes to Ethereum, it emulates BTC a lot, although it does sometimes have a little bit of a mind of its own where we saw that run in the mid part of the year without BTC's uh, involvement at all. But certainly we're definitely getting to a, an oversold condition on our RSI, on Steamroller. <clears throat> and the last thing I ever doubt on any asset is Ethereum when it comes to our custom indicators, their, their magic, how they work. Um, so yeah, definitely. I think that that the man zone that ads has drawn in, I think, is going to be the likely pace. We haven't seen the the steam that we need from this move or from this position to to run Ethereum back up. Even the the buys, you know, that that um, candle after that that fall to the lows was not very strong. And this is a daily candle, mind you. Yeah. Uh, and as we stand right now, we've actually just closed below uh, yesterday's high so it's um it's not looking great at the moment for ethereum yeah if you break it down in in sense of you know the price action market structure what we're looking at uh even if you zoom into the four hour time frame you get a little bit more of a up-to-date glimpse on what we're seeing uh you're 100 right the the trend is continuing to the downside the <clears throat> excuse me the volume isn't increasing you know exponentially to you know give us a you know test or a movement back up to what we could seem uh what could seem like you know 38 so increasingly looking like 3k is going to be the area that will test for a second time and of course that f falls very much in line with a lot of liquidity that we see to the left hand side where that uh, daily demand is drawn really, yeah really even with their volume profile there's not a hell of a lot holding this back up until like 27 almost 26 at the moment, if we look at our volume profile on the daily, if we oh, pull out, yeah, yeah, if we zoom out a little bit, uh, yeah, just try and capture that immediate yeah. area yeah. there. Yeah. You know, our point of control, yeah, there we go. You know, sits um, sits around eighteen hundred dollars. We're not going to get to that point, I no. don't think. Um, but I think at this point, I would not be surprised to see Ethereum trading in the mid two thousands. You can see exactly where, yeah, what ads has just circled there. Uh, you know, from that demand zone at around two eight, there's there's not much liquidity down towards that sort of two six two five area. So, 
um, yeah, not not a great deal happening. Again, as we said, NFTs in January this year alone, NFTs uh, experienced one of the, the biggest volume increases in sales on Open Seas, uh, really since Open Seas started. So NFT interest is huge at the moment. And excuse me, just before I was talking about Arthur Hayes' article, we actually released that today. Uh, we've got another article coming out next week, but yeah, definitely um, Ethereum. It's spooky, spooky for Ethereum at the moment. What's your gut feeling say? Down. Down. Okay. Let's, uh, let's keep that on the radar and we'll talk about that in our next video as well. Yeah, another little flush and then okay. head back up. Yeah, I think you're right, to be honest. Yeah, we'll yeah, see how we go. Happy to be wrong. Oh, always. Yeah. Always. And, and we, talk, we talk about this so often as well, not to, not, not to diverge a little bit, but, you know, um, You've got, to, you've got to consider your options. You know, do you want to start looking for bottoms and averaging in, or do you want to just wait for the market to reverse, show signs of strength, and then jump in and buy the trend to the upside? You know, for as I said in, in my video about Arthur Hayes and with Raul Paul the other day, if you know the, the strategy for those guys is buy and hold. I'm buying now because I'm looking towards 2025 or 2026, and they're not traders, they're investors. So yeah. for most people, the, the most profitable strategy is simply just buying an asset, holding it, and believing in the future of it and, and letting it ride. And, you know, in relation to that uh, sort of mindset, if you go back and you look at the log scale of a lot of these assets and yeah. you look at the, the lows and the highs of each, you know, market cycle, uh, even if you bought at the highest point, you know, of, you know, the last, let's say you bought BTC at 20, well, the previous high, well, you look at it now. Mm, exactly right. Exactly. Well, exactly I that mindset. Let's jump in uh, to the, the latest Ethereum killer, Sol, and see what is going on there. The Sol NFT network is increasing quite a lot at the moment as well. Uh, you know, giving a, a Ethereum a run for its money because of the gas fees that are just ludicrous when it comes to open season and trying to buy NFTs. It's, it's crazy. Uh, but same thing again for, for Sol, in my opinion. Um, I'm still seeing a bit of weakness here. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we do go out to the, the daily time frame, just quickly adds as well. One thing that I do want to mention here that I have uh, drawn in on my own screen is the fact that we've got uh, a little bit of a sort of broadening, descending wedge style pattern here um, for, uh, I wish I could edit that better. And we spoke about this on um, on BTC a little while ago as well. It might be a little more, a little bit more of a, a parallel channel sort of thing there. So I think, in, in my opinion, I think that that Seoul is not going to be able to defend this area, and I do think we'll ultimately see a move back down towards that one fifteen, maybe one ten level on on Seoul. On, in my opinion, at the moment, you know, when the market does start to recover, I think Seoul will be one of the ones that does recover, along with Avax, Luna. Um, you know, maybe Binance coin for, to, a, to a degree sort of thing. But um, yeah, I don't think that it's looking strong for a lot of altcoins at the moment. And I tend to agree with that, to be honest with you. Um, there's nothing besides, you know, being oversold, of course, um, there's not much to really say, hey, we're, you know, gearing up for a movement to the up, explosive move to the upside back to 200 uh, 200 mm. bucks for, for Sol. It really comes down to, are we going to, you know, stay around these ranges, this liquidity area, whether it be 140, whether it be 120, whether it be 110, uh, to accumulate, uh, you know, within this boundary uh, before moving to the upside? I think that might be uh, more uh, on the cards, like you did say. Yeah, for sure. And as it stands right now, from a daily standpoint, from our moving averages, mm -hmm. we've just broken below and we're retesting our 200 MA, which is the first time that has that's happened since uh, July last year, where it's just been on a massive uprun. So in terms of where it stands right now, that's pretty significant. We go to the two day time frame. the next little bit of support from an MA standpoint, again, sits around that sort of 102, 103 area. So if you just go 2D and zoom out ads, you can see that uh, that red line there is the 200 moving average. We're sitting below our 100 now on the the two day, so it's uh, it's significant for for, for Seoul to defend this area to head yeah. back up towards that 180, 175 sort of level. But as it stands right now, I'm not seeing much strength. Yeah, good pickup. 
Cool, cool. All right, let's have a look at Luna. This is the one that everybody's been talking about. Uh, Calio on uh, on Twitter has been pumping this through his channel for a long time. Some really good moves on it as of late. Uh, it did show a little bit of strength after that uh, sort of immediate dump where we kind of had a, a 6 7% move uh, back to the upside. Actually, no, I, I stand corrected on the daily time frame in the last two days. It's done almost 20%. Uh, but as it stands right now, it's uh, looking like it may be headed back down towards demand, sitting below that 50 RSI, just back into to bearish RSI territory again. Um, a pretty quick little sell-off seems to be occurring at the moment. The only thing that I could maybe see there that might save it would maybe be this sort of, of thing, perhaps if it gets held up around that 68 sort of level and, and, uh, and recovers from there, maybe makes a new uh, higher low and goes goes like this back up towards that $80 level. Um, so I think I'm of, I'm of the mind where we might see sort of mid-60s uh, be tested before another result on Luna. And I think that's the case uh, in relation to the market structure. It's, it's pretty apparent in which we are following. Uh, I think, you know, having eaten away this level of demand so far, uh, it's, you know, pretty... It's a, it's a pretty safe hedge that we'll probably see this sort of liquidity again, uh, you know, 56, 55, uh, even, you know, uh, 60 or high 50s, like you did mention. I think that's going to be the area of interest for Luna if it doesn't hold this uh, level for a second time. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, 60, 60 somethings are back on the cards. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. I do think, again, I think that will be one of the quicker ones to recover once liquidity starts coming back into that market, just purely based on the hype around it in the last sort of two to three months. It, it, it was it ran on hype, very similar to, to Sol, yet doesn't have as many um, immediate functionalities as what Sol does now in terms of the NFT marketplace. Uh, all right, let's have a look at AVAX because I'm interested to see what's going with that. And then I think we'll wrap this up. AVAX is another one. Um, Again, you know, had a, a decent recovery from that uh, from that level, but you know, if we yeah, w where it stands at the moment, we've we've not seen anything significant to suggest that we might head back up towards that that top one hundred and twenty level that we were at beforehand. I think um, more downside, on my opinion, in uh, in my opinion, is <laughs> excuse me, I think more downside is on the cards, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> when it, when you say downside. Uh... In relation to the levels of demand, I think there's two levels that are too close together in in the sense where uh, typically if there's two levels too, uh, close together in terms of a demand, you get rid of the top one and then you you know take premise or take precedence on the second in which we had a better bounce. Uh, and you know this bounce here, uh, where what date was that? That was on the 14th of December. The 14th of December bounce resulted in this leg up out of that zone. So there is a lot of uh, liquidity and buying pressure at that level. So it caused a 63% move uh, in which, you know, it always or it does typically return to the scene of the crime. Uh, and that could be that 75.50 area, or even if you wanted to hedge your bets at 76 or $77, that might be <clears throat> the area that I would look towards for AVAX currently. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd have to agree with that, even though it's made a, a higher low and, and not retested that demand zone exactly from from this point, which is a, which is a good thing. Um, yeah, this, this even on the, the daily or the, on the four hour there, it's starting to look pretty ugly. So I think, uh, yeah, if we can see this sort of move from AVAX, then I think I'd be a little bit more convinced. So I think it's just a matter of waiting and watching at the moment for AVAX. Yeah. If we're looking at, you know, if you're looking at hedging in or, or DCAing in or get, get, or getting a, a better entry uh, at, you know, 80, 79, 76, 77, uh, you'd be waiting and watching to see what happens at, you know, the, the mid 80s, I guess, and uh, and calling it then. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And beyond that, I don't think there are many that I would be too interest, interested in, in terms of um, hype at the moment, near USDT is or near is doing quite well. Again, Luna, um, ones that I always watch at times like this are VET and Theta. Yeah. If you're able to catch a small uh, little run on that, sometimes ICX as well. But again, you know, there's nothing wrong with staying sidelined until this market shows you a sign of where we head 
uh, you know, where, where it is a, a better opportunity to average in or to, to buy what you think may be the bottom. But I don't think in 2022 we're going to see the same sorts of runs and, uh, you know, profits that we saw. Well, certainly profits, but certainly not um, the runs that we experienced across the market in 2021. That was a, a perfect catalyst for BTC in the market to run. So I think this year is going to be a challenge, more challenging trading year. So you really need to have your wits about you and, you know, staying in perhaps the BTCs, the Fs, the souls of the world the high liquidity coins might be a better bet for you to stop uh, getting liquidated or, or stopped out very quickly on uh, lower liquid coins that, that people are going to pull out of very quickly if things go start going south. And, you know, to add to that, there's nothing wrong with zooming out, looking at the uh, the one day, the, the eight hour, the 12 hours, yeah. you know, giving yourself as much or more information that you currently do have to, uh, you know, identify levels that might be of interest and, you know, that you can stay in a trade for longer and uh, and reap those rewards, I guess, or wait for it to come to you instead of chasing it, uh, that, you know, five minute or, or one hour candle. I love that. I think that's the good point to end on. So thanks for sticking around. UnityTradingGroup.com. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. Uh, as we said, more content, three pieces of content minimum per week from uh, from now on from us here at UTG. So let us know below, uh, below rather in the comments, what type of content you might want to see, trading videos, NFTs, metaverse. I'm deep in NFTs this year. So I'm happy to produce more content on that. Let us know below and we'll uh, see you in the next market update. Thanks for joining us. Catch you later.